All right, thank you everyone for uh, bearing with us for this afternoon. Um, we have four uh, very uh, distinguished panelists. They're going to come and give you a pitch, a pitch that focuses on an idea that you as our citizenry can think about and see what kind of action uh, you might take on this. The focus is on the future of work, enabling the future of work. So each person will come out, we'll do a quick pitch to give you the idea, and then we'll have a small uh, dialogue afterward. So uh, Erica, why don't you come down here and join me and... Brilliant. Thank Please. you. Okay, so uh, good afternoon everyone. My name's Erica Brodnock and I am the co-founder of a company called Cami. Uh, Cami is the trusted personal companion and intelligent support assistant um, for modern parents. So a little bit about me. I'm the mum of five children, I'm an executive MBA, I'm a serial entrepreneur, and I'm Sky News' resident parenting expert. So I've been able to build a team around me with this, um, with the perfect mix of skills for success. My co-founder, Moncho, is a PhD who specializes in agent-based modeling. Um, that's a type of AI that enables um, algorithms to learn from and imitate human behavior. My other co-founder is also an MBA. He's Paul. He specializes in um, human resources. And then we have an advisory team that is made up of behavior change and mental health experts who, um, who support our rapid growth. So what does this awesome team do, I'm hearing you ask? Well, I'd like you to imagine that you're here today meeting Celine, Marie Claire, and Thierry. Um, they are all from different races, socioeconomic backgrounds, um, and, um, and locations. But the one thing that is unifying them is that having a baby is turning their world upside down. Whether it's the first child or the third child, the transition to parenthood is really tough. Um, we have no training for this job, and we're generally um, expected to rely on our intuition to see us through. The new parent economy is worth around $76 billion and we're seeing 11% CAGR growth each year on that as well. So more than 540 million people became parents last year, and one in three of those people had some sort of mental health issue. And that's simply too much, particularly when you think about the impact that it has on the child, the parent's ability to return to work, and uh, the economy at large. So at CAMI, we're specifically focusing on the five million people that are across the UK and France who will be embarking on this journey um, this year. And it's a market that's worth about 16, um, 16 billion euros. But it's not just about the money. Our vision at CAMI is, is more about utilizing the power of big data and globalization to support all parents through pregnancy, early parenting, and beyond. Our first product is an intelligent chatbot um, that learns from human experts using agent-based modeling to de democratize access to specialist support when parents need it most. Um, so we empower parents with expert knowledge from, um, from our individual experts that's tailored to a, their individual needs, and we manage the parental leave process for employers to ensure a smooth return to work following maternity or paternity leave, and that's replicated through um, artificial intelligence. So to put this into context, if Celine um, is awake in the middle of the night because she's struggling with breastfeeding, we connect her to an expert in Australia for instance, who's awake at that time anyway, and they provide the support. When Marie Claire has the same issue three days later, CAMI AI has already learned how to respond to that query and can provide the response seamlessly and only connect um, Marie Claire to the expert if she absolutely needs it. So our B2B model enables forward-thinking employers to provide this personal companion to their staff. In return, we give employers the opportunity to um, create a motivated and more productive workforce, and we enable them to create um, meaningful social impact. 
We do that because for every employer that pays for the CAMI service, we are able to provide it to low-income families free of charge. And we do that in order to truly democratise access to the specialist support that every parent needs when they're embarking on the journey. So in the UK, we're already working with some big names. If you want to join the likes of KPMG and Aviva um, and run um, a, a pilot in your organisation or Cambridge Social Ventures and back us financially, then come and speak to us after the, um, the pitches are through. But in the meantime, all that remains to be said is thank you from me. Um, I'm Erica Brodnock and this is Cami. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. Olivier? No, no, you can leave the chair. Unless you need a job moving chairs. No. I'm Olivier Ollier. I am a DJ. And during the day, I'm a neuroscientist and president of Emotive. We have a global leader in portable brain technology. These brain scanners that communicate with your phones that allow to record brain activity. For a lot of people, this technology sounds like science fiction. And I can't blame you, because if I would put this on Alan's head, he would look like a character from a sci-fi movie. But this is not science fiction. This is science in action. And what we're trying to address is the gap between what can be measured from what people say and what is actually happening in their bodies. Think about what is happening at work. There is one big enemy at work. The enemy of your wellness. The enemy of safety. The enemy of learning and of performance. And this enemy is the one-size-fits-all workplace management and workday design. But I don't know about you, but even myself, I'm in a different state of mind, state of fatigue, bodily and mentally, on a Thursday compared to a Monday. How can we take this into account? For a lot of us who are lucky enough to have a job, we are seen by our organization and our employer through the lens of cognitive and personality tests that we undergo during the recruitment period and right after. Those tests are supposed to measure personality. In reality, they barely measure states temporary states, and as I mentioned earlier, we are different from one day to another. There are two things that every organization in the world can be interested in, is understand what stresses their employees and what distracts them. This is why, at Emotive, we've decided to focus on being able to leverage 10 years of collecting data, not in scientific labs, and medical labs, where neuroscience is generally run and used, but in real life, in the workplace. To what end? In order to personalize the day of work. Similarly, that it's wonderful to have a custom-made suit. It is great to have a custom-made day of work. But, again, one size fits all. How many people, even different, so different, have to sit down in front of a computer from 9 to 12, yet some can focus very, very intensely for two hours, others only for 45 minutes. The problem is, how can we make them happier? How can we increase wellness and performance in the workplace? Some would say that wearing this during an entire day of work is not the best way to do it. That is right. And this is why we moved from a form factor that is very futuristic to something that people can wear during the entire day of work. Something that basically allows you to take calls, to take executive trainings, but also can measure your brain activity through your ears. This is only made possible after 10 years of collecting data with a lot of other electrodes. What do we do? We provide not only the real-time assessment, of stress and attention and distraction, but we interface it with softwares. We recently signed a partnership with SAP where their intelligent interface, Fiori 3, responds to 
the current state of mind of people, affective and cognitively. Of course, we're doing this in respecting the law, respecting ethics and morals. <coughs> the point being that this is used to remove time of work, to improve wellness and safety, and ultimately to move from forcing people to adapt to their work environment to designing work environment that is designed for our brains, our personality, and our uniqueness. I thank you very much for your attention. That was Olivier from Emotive. Thank you, Olivier. Uh, Ava, please. Hi, so I'm uh, Evelyn Chatoro. I'm uh, the VP of Marketing at Mobius. So Mobius is a French startup, and uh, our mission at Mobius is transforming the future of work by creating applications in a new way, in a more easy way uh, for everybody, and making it accessible to everybody. So our mission is to empower every organization in this digital battleground. So we're talking since this morning a lot about digital transformation, about how technology will change our lives, how technology transforms everything, uh, bringing, uh, reducing gaps, bringing knowledge, bringing everything. And this is where we come, and this is where Mobius is willing to help you. Olivier just mentioned that the time of one size fits all is over, and this is exactly what we are saying as well. One size fits all in terms of applications is over. We need tailored applications. But this is super complex. This is super complex, and our IT departments are overloaded in the big companies. Smallest companies are often scared of what it means to create an application and a lot of work and where to find the right developers. And they don't feel comfortable with technology. So this is where we're coming. So this is where we propose something different for the future of work. So just imagine that you could create an application for your business as easily as having a conversation with an intelligent chatbot. So what there is behind is that we are considering application creation, application building as a building a car. Imagine that each component of the car is a feature of your application. So how do we do that? We're working with uh, researchers and researcher laboratories at CNRS, INRIA, uh, Lipsis in Paris University, and uh, a laboratory in Montpellier at LIRM, working on two concepts, variability of applications and software product lines. And we're making those concepts real and making them accessible to you. So what does it mean? Variability, it means that an application becomes variable. You can select the features. It's not about a template that you customize. It goes much way beyond this. It's creating your own application with your own features. And how do you build them afterwards? We create software product lines, just like a line where, where you build your car, you select the features, you select how you has to be if it's a car, if it's a truck. And then we build your application, and all that the business users, the business leaders will see is a chatbot. Um, and this is how you build your application in less than an hour. So this is our revolution in the digital battleground, and this is the value we want to bring to everyone, uh, building applications in less than an hour accessible to everybody. So to make it short and to conclude, Mobius Suite uh, is made of several tools. You can come downstairs and meet us to have a demonstration. There is a little car uh, in front of, uh, um, of our team. And what we really want to do is facilitate, put digital transformation in your hands, facilitate your lives, the life of organizations, small organizations, bigger organizations, and make applications accessible to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Ava. Uh, Kareem, please.
Merci. Je vais vous parler en français pour changer un peu. <rire> Et donc, je suis Karim Psy, président de Digital Africa. Donc, je vais aussi vous parler de l'Afrique. L'Afrique est un des plus grands continents de la planète. On a tendance à l'oublier. 54 pays, une diversité incroyable. Un quart de la population active mondiale en 2050. Donc, ça veut dire que quelque part, le futur du monde va se jouer en Afrique avec 70% des réserves minérales qui sont en Afrique, plus d'une euh, grosse partie de, de, des terres arabes non cultivées, donc quand on va devoir nourrir la planète, etc. Face à tous ces défis, et on le voit bien, toute la matinée nous a montré que euh, le monde aujourd'hui est en train de se transformer, et se transforme notamment par le digital. Euh, on a beaucoup euh, d'enjeux qui nous, qui nous prennent de partout. Le digital, il faut le comprendre. Moi, je suis déjà old-fashioned par rapport à, à des jeunes générations qui sont en train d'arriver. Je vois mes enfants, l'interaction qu'ils ont avec le digital. Donc, ça touche la société, ça touche le politique, ça touche le rapport au monde, ça touche à tous les secteurs et à l'économie. Quand on se met dans cette perspective, qu'en plus on rajoute le défi écologique, on est dans un stress incroyable. Mais face à tout ça, il y a un secteur incroyable, c'est celui de l'éducation qui, quand on va dans une université haute, en fait, on n'a pas changé depuis plus de 150 ans. On nous enseigne de la même manière euh, et on, nous on doit nous préparer au changement. Les compétences aujourd'hui qui sont demandées pour quelqu'un au XXIe siècle, c'est d'apprendre à désapprendre rapidement. Parce qu'en fait, ça va tellement vite que ce qu'on a appris est déjà passé date. Et donc, il faut apprendre à désapprendre. Il faut apprendre à être en équipe. Puisqu'en fait, pour construire et bâtir un monde en commun, quand on a une communauté de destin, ça va nous demander de travailler en collaboration. Et donc ça, c'est dès l'école. Non pas se mettre en compétition, mais commencer à apprendre, à être en collaboration, à être dans une réflexion commune, et mieux, et là par l'usage des technologies, être dans une réflexion commune, dans une dynamique qui va être glocale, qui va être avec un ancrage local. Monaco, c'est pas Dakar, c'est pas Paris, c'est pas Nice. Mais cette spécificité va venir enrichir le global. Et c'est cette diversité euh, nourrie de, 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 nos, de nos positifs et de nos plus qui va nous permettre de construire cela. Et donc, euh, si euh, on voit, avec l'UNESCO, euh, on est en train de travailler sur un projet qui est le, le Learning Planet, la planète apprenante qui va donc pouvoir, par les technologies, commencer à construire des corpus communs d'apprentissage. On voit, on a déjà des dynamiques qui sont créées. Aujourd'hui, accéder au savoir que nous offre une école comme Harvard ou plusieurs écoles en France autour de FunMOOC, par exemple, où on va avoir 180 établissements qui vont partager des connaissances, accessible partout sur la planète. On a par exemple sur FunMOOC plus de 60 000 Africains qui y accèdent. À l'origine, c'était fait pour la France. Et donc, à travers ça, permettre d'accéder à des, 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 des connaissances ouvertes, partagées, avec des communautés qu'il va falloir créer, des communautés apprenantes, locales, mais connectées au niveau international pour échanger, avec des communautés de formateurs qui vont être organisées, des lieux d'apprentissage, et on voit bien que les lieux changent, c'est-à-dire aujourd'hui, ici peut être un lieu, euh, un garage peut être un lieu, un tiers-lieu peut être un lieu, un incubateur peut être un lieu, une entreprise peut être un lieu, une école peut être un lieu. Et donc les écoles sont en train de se métamorphoser. On voit d'ailleurs les, les écoles commencer à créer des learning labs. Et donc ces lieux, ces communautés d'apprenants, ces communautés de formateurs, ces ressources pédagogiques ouvertes euh, et une plateforme pour permettre euh, de mettre tout ça en musique. Et si on rajoute... Cette logique où on voit aujourd'hui émerger aussi des amateurs professionnels et toutes ces dynamiques d'innovation, on voit bien, l'innovation a changé. L'innovation est ouverte. L'innovation s'ouvre à tout un lot de partenaires qu'on ne connaît pas. Euh, la dernière fois que j'étais à la Silicon Valley, la grande blague, c'était de dire qu'un euh, qu qu smartphone, en fait, c'est une voiture sans roue. Et donc, euh, donc on voit bien qu'on est en train de rentrer dans des univers qui ne sont pas appréhendables. Et, et, et donc, il faut appréhender par les communautés et par une dynamique qui va être ascendante. Et donc, euh, aujourd'hui, l'appel que l'on fait avec l'UNESCO, c'est justement d'aller vers un, un, une, une planète apprenante, tous ici euh, que vous êtes, et euh, bien sûr, aussi de faire participer l'Afrique avec une Afrique apprenante, parce que l'Afrique a aussi à apporter euh, dans ce grand... Euh, 
un concert des nations euh, qui est en train de se jouer. Je vous remercie. Thank you. So we have a, a few minutes. Um, maybe let's uh, open this up a little bit. Uh, one of the things uh, we've talked about here uh, is, is new technology helping. But one of the fears people have is sometimes new technology uh, eliminates jobs more than, than it helps through increased productivity or replacement uh, of labor. Uh, what, what's your thoughts as you're looking at some of the technology What effect do you, do you expect to see in terms of job creation? Is this just a, a different way of looking at work, or is it, 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 do we see some additional uh, growth? So, yes, jobs will be disappearing, new jobs will be appearing, and let's remember that one day there was a job in each elevator. <laughs> um, if we consider what we are saying about application creation, so, um, We can make it, we can automate this, but we automate just a part of it and we cannot automate everything, which gives more time to do tasks that have more value where it involves people's creativity. So um, the jobs will be different and hopefully more interesting because we can automate what is, takes a lot of time, what is less interesting, and uh, I hope it will give people much more freedom. Just Kareem, very quick. Yeah, I think the same. I mean, uh, what I just said is that we are building a platform. So technology is part of, part of it. But the thing is, you don't need to build a platform that will be uh, an asservissement of the population, but more unleash, actually, the creativity, as you said. And how we do that. It's not just tech. So it's how enhance our humanity with tech. And, and Eric, I mean, you definitely talked about getting people maybe even more quickly or more efficiently back into the workforce and having a, a plan. So. Absolutely. So um, we're losing people from um, existing workforces because they are having children and their skills are no longer being recognized or they're unable to find that balance between work and life in some circumstances. So um, using technology to enable um, or facilitate people returning to work, I think, is a great thing. But in addition to that, we're looking at globalization as well, because um, different time zones mean that actually sometimes people need services in the middle of the night here, and that's the middle of the day elsewhere. And those services can be um, taken from all around the globe really quickly and really easily using technology, providing opportunities to people in parts of the world who may not have ordinarily had those opportunities previously. And, and Olivier, if, if, I, if I can personalize my work, does that make me more efficient? Or uh, does that increase more opportunities or both? I think it's both. What is, what is really interesting is uh, the fact that when one looks at all these predictions that we're hearing about job replacement, we don't know. The people who are on top of the AI games, those who really do AI, unlike those who claim they're doing AI, would do not make any prediction as to what is going to happen in five, 10 years. The one thing that we can be sure of is that companies, small or large, are investing massively in executive training and reskilling people. And in order to train or retrain someone, you need to understand what their skills are, what the experience are, but also Sorry, I'm very biased here, but I embrace it. Um, you need to understand how their brains work in order to help them better learn new skills, allocate them to something where they would be happy, feel well, but also perform well for the benefits of everyone. Yeah. So um, I apologize for the panelists. Obviously, we can continue to talk, but we're out of time. I see the people coming to to grab us. We're trying to, I guess, get back on schedule. So thank you very much for your pitch and for the small discussion after. Thank you.